Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you all for being here. I have a lot of questions I want to get through quickly. Uh, Director Haynes, in September, your staff uh, notified the committee that NCTC was hosting a 90-day effort called the Interagency Sprint Cell on Intelligence Support to Counter Narcotics, uh, focused on identifying opportunities for improved intelligence-driven operational outcomes. Just w wondering what the outcome was of that, I, I guess, a pilot program, would you call it? Yeah, it was really, it was a sprint that we hosted that uh, brought in folks from across the intelligence community, meaning the folks here had folks who were representative on it, but also included, um, uh, for example, uh, parts of DHS that are not in their intelligence component, um, other uh, folks, for example, in Treasury and so on. And the idea was really to see, are there ways in which we can better support within the intelligence community what um, DEA is doing what right. Treasury is doing in sanctions. What so? Do you have recommendations so based yeah. on that? Yeah. So they they've just finalized a report. We can get you a copy okay. of that right. and provide. It. I look look forward to seeing it. Um, General Hawk, how is NSA currently utilizing FISA 702 collection to target narcotics trafficking? And I really want you to to focus on the fact that because of the, because counter narcotics is not categorized uh, within uh, FISA 702 that prevents us from actually targeting a lot of the affiliates of the Mexican drug cartels, their subcontractors, let's say. you speak to that? Uh, Representative Crenshaw, thank you for the question. Section 702 is vital to the national defense of our nation in so many different ways. Uh, as you've highlighted, it does give us a flexibility in terms of targeting foreign intelligence threats overseas. The area that we have been successful in this space is being able to identify some of the precursor chemicals uh, as they are transiting from China, but then we do hit limitations in how we can use that authority. And that is an area that within the uh, counter narcotics, giving us an opportunity to pursue additional authorities as it related to Section 702 and counter narcotics would give us more options to be able to further uh, illuminate what that threat looks like coming to the United States. Right, that's extremely important. We've tried to make, uh, we've, tried, we've tried to make those changes. We've, we've, we've run into problems. So it's important that the American people know that we're literally tying our hands behind our back uh, in the effort to battle fentanyl production and trafficking. We're not even talking about American citizens here. We're talking about foreigners and foreign lands. Uh, Director Ray, I, I wanna, ask you, what, what, is, what is your view, especially from the law enforcement perspective, the FBI, FBI perspective, what are the costs and benefits of designating uh, cartels as a, as a, as a foreign, uh, as, a, as a foreign terrorist organization? So from a, from a law enforcement perspective, the principal benefit uh, of a designation would be, uh, it would give us some enhanced abilities to, uh, to go after their money that we uh, we don't have, we have some already. I don't want to make it sound like we don't have any, but it would enhance that. I think the principal effects of a, of a, uh, an FTO designation would be more in the lane of other, other agencies, authorities that they would have. Okay. Um, this is maybe a question for everybody, but you know, the common, the common question I have is who should be in charge of a whole of government strategy to battle the Mexican drug cartels? Is this a law enforcement problem or is this our national security apparatus problem or a mix of both? And if you could have your way, if you could pick somebody to be the grand strategist, where would they live? What office? Would it be the White House? Would it be the Attorney General's office? Would it be the DOD or CIA? What are your opinions on that? And I leave that to anyone, I suppose. I think it, it, it's obviously, in a sense, beyond our scope. But, uh, but what I would say is that I think my sense of it is that um, it is a kind of a, it needs to be a whole of government strategy, meaning that you're uh, effectively moving forward on prosecutions, which DEA obviously spends the bulk of their time on going after cartels and uh, their networks. Um, it is also uh, an effort by uh, Treasury and others to do sanctions. There is also an effort by DHS, obviously, to interdict, um, and, uh, and they have been success in this space as well. It is also an opportunity for us to support um, that kind of broader interdiction through the intelligence that we provide. And I think it's, uh, all of those should be tools right. that we're using in this context. I understand it's a, a caught you off guard a little bit there, but this is a longer conversation that we must have. And I have one more really important question, so I wanna to get to it. Our adversaries have no problem. They have no hesitation infiltrating our critical infrastructure um, through cyber means. They have no problem doing it attacking civilian critical infrastructure. 
we do not have the policy or will to do the same back. I view this as a deterrence problem. It is the same to me as nuclear deterrence. Um, do you view it the same and should we view cyber threats the same as we view nuclear deterrence and have the policies in place to and the abilities to to engage in the same kind of offensive cyber operations that our adversaries are perfectly willing to do? So, uh, Representative Crenshaw, I, I think this is an area for us as we look at it, first and foremost, we, we look at it through three different lens. First, it's our job to really understand and generate insights about the threat. And I think that's an area that we work across the community to understand what this threat looks like. Second is enabling defense. How do we enable defense from both internal to the government, also for our industry and for our allies in these type of threats? And the third is we have to impose cost. And that can be through any number of means using all the tools that are available to the executive branch to impose costs on anyone that, would, that are willing to target our critical infrastructure. And, and we have to be able to inform that. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. We need to be able to impose costs. And our enemy has to know that we're willing to impose costs, which is effectively the, the philosophy of deterrence. But I'm well over time. So thank you, Chairman, for, for indulging me. And I yield back.